All living organisms on Earth are made of cells, and all cells are using ATP as an energy coin. Although ATP is a tiny molecule, it can yield considerable amounts of energy through the simple process of reacting with water. They resemble rechargeable batteries. Those in a state of charging are called ATP, and those in a state of discharging are called ADP. ADP, a discharge molecule, becomes ATP, a charge molecule again, by using the energy of food or photosynthesis. The mitochondria in cells contain a factory powered by food or photosynthesis that generates ATP molecules. By extracting energy from the ATP produced at the factory, cells carry out activities of life, such as movement, growth, and protein production. We carry batteries around that can easily be used when required. In a similar way, cells extract energy from ATP molecules according to their needs. The factory in mitochondria generating ATP is actually an enzyme called ATP synthase. It plays an extremely critical role because it is responsible for generating the energy required to maintain life. Since the 1990s, the mechanism and action of ATP synthase have been elucidated by a group led by Professor Yoshida of Kyoto Sangyo University. During cellular respiration, a concentration of hydrogen ions creates a potential difference between the inner and outer mitochondrial membranes. ATP synthase has two rotating portions, called FO and F1. The FO portion rotates using the force of hydrogen ions flowing from the higher concentration level to the lower. The rotation energy generates ATP in the F1 portion. The mechanism of ATP generation is very similar to that used to produce hydroelectricity. Hydroelectric power generation uses the gravitational force of falling or flowing water to generate electricity. In the case of ATP synthase, a difference in the concentration of hydrogen ions is used to generate ATP. The size of ATP synthase is 10 nanometers or one one hundred thousandth of a millimeter. It's been discovered that each cell contains numerous rotating nano-sized factories producing energy. Many mysteries concerning ATP synthase remain to be solved, including the mechanisms that regulate ATP synthesis. ATP synthase synthesizes ATP when there is a difference in the concentration of hydrogen ions. But it consumes ATP when the difference disappears as the result of a reverse reaction. When the difference in the concentration of hydrogen ions cannot be created for some reason, such as a state of starvation, some kind of mechanism should work to prevent the wasteful consumption of ATP that has been synthesized with so much effort under critical conditions. In cooperation with Professor Gregory Cook at the University of Otago in New Zealand, the ATP Synthesis Regulation Project at the Japan Science and Technology Agency has unraveled the regulatory mechanisms of ATP synthesis by carrying out enzymatic reactions one after another. This CG represents the regulatory mechanisms of ATP synthase found in bacteria. ATP synthase contains an epsilon subunit it was already known that this epsilon subunit comes in two conformations, contracted and extended. The project team attached two shining dyes to the epsilon subunit, one called acceptor and the other donor. When the subunit is contracted and donor and acceptor are close together, donor does not shine much because its energy is transferred to acceptor. But when the subunit is extended and donor and acceptor are far apart, donor shines as a result, its light clearly indicates the shape of the epsilon subunit. 
To make it easier to observe, a bead is attached to the enzyme. The ATP concentration is changed and the bead is observed from above to see how it rotates. When the ATP concentration is increased, the enzyme rotates. It is clear that the Epsilon subunit is contracted because donor's light is weak. When the ATP concentration is reduced, the enzyme stops rotating. And it is now clear that the Epsilon subunit is extended because donor is shining brightly. This is the regulatory mechanism made clear by the test results. When ATP is abundant, the Epsilon subunit is contracted and promotes an enzymatic reaction. When ATP is decreased, it extends and retards the rotation of the enzyme. It's thought that the Epsilon subunit plays the role of an emergency brake whenever ATP is not abundant to halt the enzyme's trend to consume ATP. The regulatory mechanism of the human ATP synthase is also gradually being clarified. The project team attached a bead to the rotating part of the F1 of the human ATP synthase and successfully observed its rotation. Here are the images obtained. They reveal that the human ATP synthase rotates at an incredible speed, around 1,400 times per second. These are slow motion images, 1,000 times slower than the actual speed. In the case of humans, a protein factor binds to the motor from the outside to inhibit rotation. These test images show that rotation stops when an inhibitor protein is added. It's believed that this mechanism controls the useless consumption of ATP. The project has also elucidated the ATP synthesis regulation mechanism of various other living organisms, including plants. It's hoped that in the future, the research results will provide new information, leading to the development of breakthrough therapy for diseases such as metabolic energy disorders.